Welcome to the High Target Webinar Online Conference. First of all, a latest greeting for Easter holiday. Um, welcome back to normal work, and I really hope you did enjoy your holiday. I'd like to express my sincere greeting and thanks to you. Because of time difference, we all are at different time in the day. Some of you may even during the midnight right now, so thanks. Thanks all you for coming. And you know, today we are going to talk about XGO here with this powerful software. Our working load could be minimized. Before we start, here is a brief introduction about myself. This is John from a technical group in High Target International Trade Department. Speaking of XGO, my connections towards this could be dated from many years ago. It began when I was still in college. I'm delighted uh, to as a speaker here to introduce this amazing software to you. Okay, let's move on back to our topic today. I'd like to categorize this session into four sections. An overview with the software using and some functionalities contained. User interface and data processing parameter setting. As a more technical part, some of the terminology will be covered as well in this part. As for the static survey, and the general working flow and demonstration will be given. It's welcoming to have questions regarding our topic or related things. You are allowed to ask any of them during the Q&A session, which is set at the end of the presentation. There may be some questions I cannot give you answers immediately, but don't worry. I will be write it down and email you later after our investigation. All right, let's begin. We already hear too much about HGU, but what exactly it is? That's the observation of a high target geomatic office. It's designed to store, manipulate, process, manage and present spatial data captured by GNSS survey. Using HGU, you can interpret your GNSS data from unreadable code to visualize the baseline and positioning result. Manage your data within different working projects. In market, we have a similar products like, uh, like at your office, Trimble Business Center, and so on. This is the home screen of uh, HGU. We can see here different areas with the different functions display. The most conspicuous one might be the network graph in the middle, and some functional area like uh, navigation bar on the left hand, message display on the bottom, and so on. More details about this will be given later, so we just have a primary impression here and move on. Here is a list of what HGU can do. That's antenna management, which is a basic but essential function here. Coordinate system transforming and transformation parameters generating, as well as the ephemeris forecasting. Apart from uh, these auxiliary functions, let's embrace the soul of uh, HGU, GNSS data processing and adjustment, like what we do in land survey. We process data and do adjustment on it. That's uh, antenna management, an uh, elementary function here, but vital for data processing. The correct uh, antenna parameters directly affect the accuracy of the serving results, especially in vertical calculation. Actually, you support users edit all data here and customize any model you are using. This database could also be updated within the use of a standard file published by NGS or IGS. We know they are, they too are in charge of testing and certifying GSS antennas produced by all manufacturers in the world. As a professional GSS serving data processing software, HGU also provides coordinate transformation tools here allow you to do coordinate transformation under different systems. All types of uh, coordinates are supported, Cartesian, geodetic, or projected coordinates. 
you can just transform points one by one or just put them in a single test file to transform them in one click. Apart from uh, transforming coordinates from uh, one system to another, we also offer parameters calculation if you have enough points in with the two set of uh, coordinates in both systems. And for ephemeris forecasting, this function aims to make a prediction for a specific uh, working plot in interest region give the observation quality of a serving area. We just roughly define the working site within latitude and longitude and give some criteria for desired observation such as cutoff angles, sample rate, satellite amount, PDOP value, and so on. The program will take care of the rest of work and give you the best working time with all requirements being satisfied. By the way, this calculation was conducted based on a mathematical method, so the previous ephemeris file is necessary for this work. This picture is the result of forecasting. Two charts of available satellite amount and the PDOP value. This is the correspondingly available time duration, signal noise ratio, orbital trio graph. So we have three practical functional tools integrated in HDU here. And now we are going to move to the main part of the software data processing. From the application perspective, GNSS techniques could be applied into two fields, navigation or serving. We all know we are surveyors, so, so we're just focusing on the serving use. Basically, we all know we have uh, two techniques, point positioning and relative positioning. As a software used for post-processing, SU is capable of processing data captured by various working modes, static, rapid static or dynamic use like a stop and go, you just occupy points within several minutes and move one. For normal use, no need of a high precision like a detail capture or staking out in construction work. Stop and, go, stop and go mode is okay to reach accuracy in centimeter level. For projects within higher accuracy demand, static is more suitable. Our attitude here is just focusing the post of first processing. Today we just focus on the static survey, a GNSS surveying technique with the highest precision result generated. As a highly accurate means, static survey requires at least two GNSS receivers occupying points and keeping still for an observation setting of on one hour or more. Longer baselines require greater observing times. Here is a term baseline, which is often used in GNSS survey, and many people may feel confused about it. So here I got a quick explanation for you. Baseline is a, is a line between two points of the Earth's surface and the direction and the distance between them. Refer to the picture shown on the screen. There are two receivers are doing static survey. The red line between them is, is what we call the baseline. Do we notice? The baseline is a vector, which means it contains distance and direction. We can express it in math as delta x, delta y, delta z. Okay, uh, back to static survey. Since static survey is a highly accurate technique, it's always used for control survey. In national level, most countries let receivers continuously operating to maintain national data. We also do the same thing for the international data maintaining, like ITRF for international using and ETRS 89 for European region. In civil engineering or industry level, we usually conduct a static survey to establish the primary control for subsequent work. For example, um, for coast station establishment, we do static survey to get accurate coordinates of a station 
before adding them into the operating cost network. In practical, there are always a lot of points need to be measured, but normally we do not have as many receivers as are required to do simultaneous observation. So we just occupy them by batch by batch. And doing so, we have some points within simultaneous observation and some points not. And so here we got two terms, synchronous loop and asynchronous loop. Actually, they all are composed of baselines and the dif difference is whether these baselines are produced at the same time. Let me give you a quite short, e simple example. We assume we have three receivers in total on each vertex of this triangle. After we've finished the observation session, we got a synchronous loop. Then we just move, move two of them to next two stations and do one more static survey. So we got one more synchronous loop here, showing as a blue triangle. Then we do one more. So we have uh, four triangles here. The other three are generated at the same time. They are three independent synchronous loops. The inner one is produced in three observations. So it's asynchronous loop. That's a field work part of a static survey. After that, we got a network like uh, this one showing on the screen and a lot of raw data waiting for processing. So then it's a time for our star at two. Here is a home screen of uh, HTU. We can see the menu bar on the top left with a tool bar beneath it. The navigation bar is located on the left hand with many tabs, project, import, processing, baseline, and so on. It covers the most uh, functions in normal use. On the middle right with a sample network showing on the screen, that's a manipulation manipulation area. Obviously, we can see there are many tabs on the top that allow us to check the data in different aspects. The message display is one is on the bottom of the page with a message reported by software displayed here. Let's see them in more detail. This is the project tab in navigation bar. In this tab, we can create your our jobs, define a specification, and coordinate system. This page is for defining specification, give error tolerance for this job. We can use a predefined one or just input a value on your own. Like here, we have a receiver precision and a relative precision. And some uh, other parameters for this project. For coordinates system, it's similar with the highest way. You can choose predefined one or just uh, given the user defined one by inputting parameters. After setting up a job, the next step is importing data into it. Now here, we can import various data we need for this job, like raw data captured by receivers or control points data we already have. We support, it, we support high target format like a DHD or GNS file and a standard format Linux data. To be noticed, HGU also supports precise ephemeris importing SP3 file, which could be downloaded from an IGS website for some high precision result. Process baseline tab, setting our processing criteria and conducting data processing. In configuration, we need to set the cutoff angles, resample interval to grab data for processing. And the frequency here means the frequency of a career V would be used, like we have L1, L2, L3 on GPS system. And also we have a L5 for latest GPS satellites. 
a navigation here in case what what ephemeris we would like to use broadcast ephemeris or precise one reference satellites means we manually choose one satellite data as the initial data for processing the calculation start from it here we choose right model for atmospheric error elimination and air pressure, humidity, temperature for environmental factors correction. This page is, uh, aims to set data as a static one or dynamic use. Otherwise, the setting with some more detailed setting for scientific use. Normally, we just keep it default, do not change anything. By the way, the baseline processing result could also be exported as a report here. That's a um, network adjustment tab, like uh, land survey after preliminary pr data processing. We need to do adjustment to eliminate big errors by using mathematical method to get the best estimate value. Here are configuration pages for adjustment. As in a more scientific setting, normally we just keep it the default, same with the baseline processing. HDU provides us users with the three types of adjustment method for different using. The first one is called free, means this adjustment didn't get uh, control points involved. So this result is only about high interior precision. As for 3D bias, the work conducted within the use of control points. Here is a sub, sub option need to be noticed. With the choice of uh, WGS84 data or target data, it determines which reference system the adjustment will be conducted in. If we just choose WGS84 data, the adjustment happened in WGS84 coordinates. For target data, it happens after projection calculation and get projected coordinates. The last option here is 2D biased and height fitting. In this method, the adjustment is only for plane coordinates, existing and nothing. The elevation will be generated via simulation on a mathematical way, more like uh, interpolation of original GUI model. Mm, yeah, here, report generation function is also available here. Now we talk more about manipulation error with all data processing results displayed here in point tab. All points are showing here, measure the point or control point. The points with a, a solid blue triangle in the start are control points. Baseline tab showing all information about the processed baseline. Observation duration data quality, you see on the bottom part of this page. Repeated baseline, and here, synchronous loop and asynchronous loop. Observation tab, this part is more like a raw data information display and a data quality check. Here we got charts for receiver clock error, single receiver positioning quality, and data duration, sky view plot, and the signal noise ratio plot in the right part. This is a basic introduction of HDU. As of now, did you get lost somewhere or feel confused about this massive information swarming into your mind? If not, congratulations, you really get it. If not, don't worry, the next session will be more straightforward and more practical. It's about what we do to process your data in real work. Now we're going to the typical working flow for static survey data processing. Actually, the software design follows this working flow, so you may feel it's quite easy and similar to the last section. Start from job creating, give basic information and a specification, coordinate, coordinate system, 
then importing raw data at the antenna height and the mode, we can just do it in manipulation error. The mode added here means we can set the data as a static survey or dynamic survey. Added control points, specify control points manually or importing by files. Then we process data, check the result and conduct adjustment. Then we got a result and export is as a report. Let's go through it. Job creating, we give a relative information here, specification, special, special reference system, and then importing data, the progress bar shows the status of work. Then added antenna height and working mode. Just right click on the observation file. We can easily set antenna receiver model and also antenna height. To be noticed here, we just input the height. We directly measured at field. The software can calibrate it to the true value. We call it the face center of a receiver. This automatic calculation is based on the Antenna management database. That's why we mentioned the antenna management are vital for your work. Then we specify control points, give coordinates, and apply them. After we have done all the preparation work, we can move to the baseline processing now. After auto processing here, may there may some baselines ineligible, like the pink highlighted ones in the in this picture. For this case, we need to carefully reset processing parameters of these baselines. Adjust the cutoff angles, resample interval to improve the data we use for processing. Once we get all satellite all baselines passed, the last process starts from adjustment. Then we do start adjustment. Just choose any one you like, or just click auto, auto adjust to get all types of adjustment carried out automatically. So far, we rarely finished the data processing work and could take a deep breath now. To present our result, I still do suggest you export your report for your work. In this stage, we can export various data within various formats as available. Test file, DOC file, STM within the baseline results, points, coordinates, and so on. Just choose the one you need and click OK, and you got to do your report. See, it's quite simple and very easy for practical using, isn't it? Now I'm gonna give you a demonstration for this static survey data processing using attitude. Gonna, here is, uh, is my data for static survey. I have, a, wow, I have so many raw data and control points. Hmm, in here we can see um, mine uh, this data is working for ref for China BG54 zone. For this special reference system, and the central meridian is a one to six degrees. And we got the two control points with the coordinates here. But we notice X, Y, H in here is uh, correspondingly to the northing, easting, and isometric height you are familiar with. So let's just begin our demonstration. Hmm. Yeah, I'm saying I must uh, wrongly click no. So here we got our as usual in here. The first one, the first step, start a new job. So here I can put some name on it. Ah, uh, where did the demo? Yeah. And this project is like a demo for static survey. 
So just pray for the static survey. Tolerance, um, I just choose 2009 for degree. Yeah. You can see here has uh, some details for stratification. And other ones, it's um, quite scientific. So normally we just keep it the default. But, yeah. That's for the coordinate system choosing. Do you still remember it? It's our, our working is for China, Chinese special reference system for 42nd degree. Yeah. Yeah. But double check the central meridian is a 1 to 6 degree. That's okay. Suppress. Okay, here. Yeah. The next step is for important data, right? Import data. My raw data, I got it on my desktop, static survey. Yeah. Hmm, this first graph shows the progress of this important work. And we also can notice that some messages just coming out from the software and display on the bottom of this page. That's finished. Oh, got a lot. What's the next step? Right? It's and it our antenna height in observation file. So observation file here. Because this data has already been editable with the this antenna height, so I, so I don't need to do it anymore. Hmm, when you said the next step is added for our control point. So like, you know, we can just uh, in here we have, uh, I remember we have uh, yeah, CK01 and CK08. There's two control points. We just uh, right click on here and this is set as a control point. So the solid blue triangle is showing here in start. And here we got him. Then we can add the coordinate system in here. But now I'm, because uh, I'm a lazy guy, I, I'd like to show you another way to to get control points imported by files. Yeah, nothing. You can see here is a nothing, listing, elevation, and a description for our points. Because because my data in this file is following this order, so I just choose this one. But if you using listing, nothing, elevation, it's okay, or even latitude, longitude. It's up to you. But my data is here, and I press open. It's still right here. It's much easier way. Right? Because uh, the coordinate system we use is based on our national system, and actually it's a local one. So I just apply, you know, change this type to local. Yeah, we finished here. So then it's. We have done the uh, height and the uh, control point setting. What do you think? We have two control points here, CK01, CK08. Like to our network plot, so it's so nice. Then we process our data baseline. Process options in here, um, normally we, we don't need to change any one of them. So I just keep it simple and press and click press O. Like what we have seen in the, during the importing data process, there is also some message coming out from a software and showing on the here, the message display error. In fact, processing baseline is the main part of the software data processing work, and it's a really a time consuming work, and it's finished. So let's, let me check the result for it to, to say if it's all passed or not. Oh, all baselines is passed here, so it's very good. Let's data upload for some of them. Repeat the baseline, it's all passed. Oh, it's nice. Synchronous loop, uh -oh, we got two ineligible synchronous loop. We just uh, leave it here and check after we checking all of them. Asynchronous loop, all are okay. So we just focus on this two uneligible synchronous loop here. 
start from the first one. Mm, we need to do to reset to to reprocess them one by one by name. And there is a tips for you. Go back to baseline and check the check the baseline in the very beginning. Here is the tips for you. We just started the reset from the longest baseline because the longer baseline implies the signal travel the further way to reach the receiver and that causes the higher poss possibility inducing error. Increasing cutoff angles is a very direct but effective method for better quality approach. Later we check the first one, the its length is uh, 1716, that's quite far. And the second one, 1375, a little bit shorter. And the last one is 2, wow it's so too long, so we just start to reset from here. Process options, yeah, just like what I just said, the increasing the cut of angle is uh, directly mean. So in, increase five degree here, apply to, and just uh, reprocess this one baseline. It's done. We check the synchronous loop here. Oh, it seems not working. So you need, you need to be patient. You need to be patient and do it uh, again. We increase five degree more and apply to reprocess this baseline until this working somehow. Oh, it's worked. All of the two eligible synchronous loop has passed now. Yeah, so that, that baseline must have been the, the, the worst one between the highest uh, error to make. Yeah, so it's. Yeah, it's all passed, so we just so we can move to the next step. Adjustment. Yeah, here. Yeah. Here we have a three options like we what we I said, and we have a target data or WGS data. It's okay. So here I just put click auto adjust, and they do all of them for me. Here I noticed that I have a one alarm here. Mm, let's see what was said. Points are not enough for height fitting. Yeah. Mm, let's just give you the quick explanation because in here we can have our two control point is CK01, CK08. If you focus on this, this graph plot is in the, under the edge of this polygon, this network. Normally this height fitting is like a simulation of a local derived model. So the two point is not enough. Plus this, this two point are located on the edge of this network. So that work may conduct error with, with higher errors. So the, for the vertical data like uh, the automatic height elevation, it's it's easily to affect it by some error and not precise for this project. So if you want to choose a height fitting function, you need to be very clear, very carefully to get enough point. Normally we need to we need three or more points. And here we just get a report to check, to initially check the result. Here is a four. As for uh, transformation parameters for from our national data to my independent uh, coordinate system, baseline input and the coordinates, yeah, coordinates for control points here. Adjusted baseline is our our pro processing. Baseline residues is our after our processing. If there is some still some. Um, you know, this misclosure and the uh, discrepancy errors remaining and remaining in the data. Adjusted the point in the WGS84. Now it's in the cotton, so system so in yeah, X, Y, Z. And here latitude, longitude, and uh, 
uh, ellipsoidal height in WGS 1840. Yeah, here is what we really focused. We really care about its uh, point coordinates in, in target uh, system. The first two is our control point coordinates and uh, the rest the three are the measured results. So it's quite easy. If you want to get a detailed report uh, in various form, in other format, like you can choose export within test, DX file for the project plot, and also baseline result project result in here, DOC file and, and text file. In here, I, I, I don't want to do it because it's a really time consuming work for the whole the whole report generating it may will cost uh, three to five minutes to generate it. Also, oh, it's uh, and the format is uh, following the, what we just uh, learned from here, showing that that STM uh, format. So see, it's quite easy. It's that's the end of my presentation here. So let's move on to the. Much anticipated Q and A session. If you have any question, do not hide in. Just ask. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you for bringing us so amazing webinar. Uh, this is our question sections. If you have any question, you can ask our speakers. We will run through them. Uh, but due, to, but due to the limited time, so we will have three audience ask questions in present. Or you can also send your questions through our email info at hightarget.com. The CN will have our Mr. John to reply you as soon as possible. So if you have questions, you can tag the hand icon to ask. Any questions? If anyone has any question, we'll run through them. Any questions? Hello? Hello? Mr. Uh, Park, Mr. Park. Yeah. Oh, can you hear hello? me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, uh, I, I, yes. I just want to speak. say, yeah, we are muted, but we don't have any question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Because I because I see the question mark beside your name. Yeah, because you're saying any question, but we. You can't hear us, so <laughs> that's why. Oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Anyway, um, yeah. Take the question uh, from the other other ones. Okay. Uh, it seems like 
then, then no one has question now. Or you can send your questions after the webinar through our email info at hightarget.com this year and, we'll, and we will reply you. Mm, the next is our poll time. We have two quick polls, so we will, we will be very pleased if you can uh, fill in your options. Uh, the first quick poll, where are you located? Latin American, Europe, Middle, Middle East, Africa, or Asia, or Asia Pacific, because we want to know your, your location and have a better arrangement for our next webinar. Okay, thank you. Uh, our last poll is how do you feel towards these sections? Thank you. Thanks for your engagement. Uh, I'm so sorry, and we have kept everyone waiting for like uh, 40 minutes. But but thank but thanks for your joining us. Uh, thank you all for your presence, and we look forward to having you as our attendees in the next Hitachi webinar. Thank you. Thank you for coming.